Bible says five is after it. There are four rooms upon four rooms. I can give you so many. In case you don't know the one to buy, you can see me after now. I'll give you so many, so many, so many to buy. Every day new ones are coming out. I've been part of weddings of people. And after a few months, I saw them. How, how is everything now? They said, well, <laughs> the thing is getting tough. And when I checked, I discovered they never read anything before that wedding. They were just carried away by emotion. Busy announcing to everybody who are, who are getting married to the wedding bells are ringing. Praise God. Number two, preparation. Develop quality relationship with God. Job chapter 22 and verse 21. He said, acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Develop quality relationship with God. When you have a quality relationship with God, you will not be under pressure. Irrespective of the, your age, you will not be moved by situations and circumstances. When you go home and your parents begin to tell you, everybody is getting married, when are you going to get married? Tell them very soon, I'll get married. But when you are not acquainted with God, when you don't have a relationship with God, you are moved, you are tossed to and fro by situations and circumstances. When you hear that one of your classmates has gotten married, you lose concentration. But I have good news for you. No matter who is getting married around you, their own marriage cannot stop your own marriage. Because everything God created, He created to operate in their own time and season. There is a time for you and there is a season for you. It doesn't matter how many people are getting married around you. The day you get married, it will look like nobody has ever gotten married before. So when people are getting married around you, rejoice with them, celebrate with them, and tell yourself, my season is coming. My own time is coming. Someone's time cannot stop your time. But when you are not acquainted with God, when you don't have a relationship with God, you'll be under pressure. Then you begin to speak languages like, well, if, if God doesn't hurry up, anybody that comes my way now, just marry. Whether believer or unbeliever, it doesn't matter. Better to be a single believing God to be married than to be married and pray to become a single believer. And I tell you the truth, there are so many people married today that are praying and wishing to become single one day. That won't be your portion. I said that will never be your portion in the name of Jesus. When you have a relationship with God and you are in an engagement and someone walks up to you, the person you are engaged with walks up to you and looks you straight in the face and says, I'm not interested in you anymore. You are, no, you are not fine enough for me. When you have a relationship with God and such a thing happens, you will turn around and give glory to God because God is about to do a new thing in your life. But when you don't have a relationship with God and someone tells you something like that, your whole life can be shattered. I've heard of people who lost their mind because an engagement was broken. And I said, what a stupid thing to do. If you lose your mind because someone says doesn't love you, what will you do when you find the one that loves you? My brother, let me announce to you, don't let no sister look down on you and tell you you are a short man. of believers, you are either wonderful or you are delicate. The psalmist said, I'm wonderfully and delicately made. You are either wonderful or delicate or you are both of them. So the sister saying you are short doesn't know what she's talking about. Because the word short is relative. The man you call short in Nigeria, when he arrives South Korea, he becomes a very tall man. Nobody look at you and tell you you are ugly. They don't know what they are talking about. And in case you are here, somebody has broken your heart and you thought that was the end of the world. And good news for you, there are about 1,000 that want to say yes for everyone that said no to you. Actually, some of the broken engagement are deliverances in disguise. What would have happened in five years' time in your marriage? God saw it ahead of time, so He delivered you from it express. That's what that man would have done to you after five years in the marriage. He would have kicked you out and bring in another wife. God saw it ahead of time. 
better to have a broken engagement than to suffer divorce. Someone has broken your heart, refuse to allow your heart to be broken. Remember, you know, the commandments here, the law. Neither consider the things of old, for behold, I will do God will do a new thing in your life. I say God will do a new thing in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number three, discover God's purpose for your life. These are things that you can do readily as a single, that when you are married, because of the demands of marriage, you may not have the time for them. Discover God's purpose for your life. Because you are not a biological accident, you are here on purpose. You are here to fulfill a definite assignment. Someone has said, when you don't know where you are going to, anyone is free to direct you. So take time as a single to find out God's plan for you. Find out God's purpose for you. He said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before the thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. God has an assignment for you. You are not a nomadic. You are not here for census. You are here for a definite purpose. You are here to fulfill destiny. Find out God's purpose for your life. And it will help you in your choice of a partner. Number four, cultivate quality character. I'm talking about preparation for marriage, the things you need to be doing. Number one, acquire knowledge. Number two, develop quality relationship with God. Number three, discover your purpose. There's a reason why you are here. And number four, cultivate character. says, favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a virtuous woman is a woman. It is character that sustains beauty. I don't care your outward look now. I don't care your outward beauty now. Without character, after a few times together, that beauty will turn to ugliness. The Bible says it's better to dwell in one corner of the rooftop than to live in the same house with a contentious woman, a woman that lacks character. You need character. It is character that sustains destiny. It is character that sustains beauty. It is character that will sustain your marriage. When every other thing falls apart, character will still be strong. And character doesn't fall down like ripe cherries. It has to be cultivated. Find out certain negative traces in you that are capable of destroying your marriage. For instance, if you are given to anger, if you don't do something about that anger while you are single and you get into marriage and it shows up, it's capable of destroying your marriage to the point that you can't even think about it. Very simple definition of character is God likeness. So everything in you that is not behaving like God as a single is time to tame it. It's time to deal with it. It's time to tame it. Character is like smoke. You can't hide it. No matter how much you try to hide it, after some time, it will show up. When pressure comes, it will show up. So the best thing to do is not to hide it. The best thing to do is to deal with it. Deal with it. The underlying factor of a character is control. One of the fruits of the spirit is called temperance. Another word for temperance is self-control. And God gave us that fruit because we have a self that must be controlled. If you don't control it, it has the ability to go haywire and do whatever it wants to do. So learn to exercise control. Exercise control on your behavior. Exercise control on the motions of the flesh. Exercise control. You have self-control because you have a self that must be controlled. And you are the one God has put in charge to control that self. Whatever you can control has become demonic. So every character trait, every negative character trait that you don't like, you don't want, the time of being a single is the time to deal with it and tame it and bring it under control. Otherwise, the marriage is capable of showing up and in one sweep can bring down the marriage of many people. 
area we need to prepare, number five, is to take care of our outward appearance. Take care of your outward appearance. Most of the time, when a brother approaches a sister to propose marriage, and after he has proposed marriage or delivered his manifesto, and the sister goes and be praying and praying and praying, and she's not coming back, check it out very closely. Something is wrong with the outward appearance. Some people have become so heavenly minded that they are not aware at all about what is happening around them. Some don't even bother to brush their teeth anymore because of so called spirituality. They are speaking in tongues. They will almost even greet you in tongues. Some even attempt to brush their teeth, but they don't brush their tongues and they don't know that's where the smell is coming up. It's all part of it. The Bible says you have been bought with a price. Glorify God with your body and with your spirit. Take time to learn about color combination. It's all part of it. Don't go and wear a red suit and a green shirt and blue tie and be looking like fireman. And then you appear before a sister to propose marriage and the sister said the Lord has not spoken to me. As a lady also, learn color combination. It's all part of it. Don't say, well, I don't have money. No matter your level financially, there's always a place where they sell your size. If you can't go to proper boutique, there are some other levels of boutique. It's not actually money you need. You need sense. That's what you need. smile on your face. And someone comes around and says, well, sister, I like your dress. Where did you buy it? You don't owe them anything to tell them where you bought it. As a lady, learn to walk like a lady. So part of outward appearance. Learn to look walk like a man. Because no man wants to marry another man. Majestically, bring out your femininity. When you talk, talk like a lady, don't talk like a man. Talk like a lady. When you sit, sit down like a lady. Sit down with dignity and honor. And brother, when you iron your trousers, don't iron it like skirt, iron it like trousers. It's all part of it. and be walking anyhow, carelessly. Walk with dignity and honor. When you talk, talk like a man. Talk straight. Iron your trousers very well. Let the gate be reporting. When you shine your shoe, let it be reflected.
Similarly, sisters learn to cook. There was a story of a, a, a lady who was never around when the mother was cooking. She was never available. She's an area girl. She has gone to the neighborhood and finding out what is happening. And most of the time when she comes back, she will find the mother clapping hand over the pot. She didn't know what the mother was cooking. Not too long, they ran into a very unfortunate man. And they headed to an unfortunate altar. An unfortunate priest joined them together. After a very elaborate wedding, all the wedding guests had gone home, went back to their house. The husband said, it's time to go and cook. The lady got into the kitchen. Everything was available. 